Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. I want to record a video today about uh, five pros and cons of using a good old camcorder to uh, shoot video, whether you're doing documentary work, posting videos up on YouTube, or even using it for client work, or you're doing a mixture of all three uh, and you uh, are thinking about buying something such as my beloved uh, Canon XA40 Pro camcorder or something similar. So let's start with the uh, pros and these are of course just as I perceive them. The main pro I think of, uh, one of the main pros of a camcorder is that it's kind of a complete package and you don't really need to do much in the way of accessorization. But let's talk about lenses firstly. So what typ typically camcorders and you know when you get to the top range of the camcorder in ENG this changes but at the kind of low end of camcorders both in consumer and the professional markets, you're going to get a fixed lens camera. That means that the lens sitting on top of the sensor is the lens and you can't change it. Now, it doesn't mean you're totally hampered in terms of effects you can have on the lens. Even if you have a fixed lens camcorder like the Canon XA40 or the Canon XA series for that matter, um, you can still put on you know, wide angle adapters, macro adapters, fisheye lens adapters, but the difference is that instead of being entire lenses, they just kind of sit on top. They're lens adapters as opposed to lenses. You can also, of course, use uh, UV filters if you want to play around with ND filters. Some of the pricier camcorders actually have built in physical ND filters, but even if they don't have that, like the XA40, you're still going to be able to pick up, you know, uh, CPL filters, different kinds of lens filters, um, and uh, change the image. But you're definitely not going to have the versatility of a, a camera that's just a sensor and you bring your own lens. Now, another major advantage of the camcorder form factor, this is a very, the XA40, which is a pro camcorder, as I mentioned, is a very typical pro camcorder form factor, right? You've got your top handle here, which allows you, it makes it really convenient to just kind of hold it or stabilize it with two points of your body like this. You definitely look like either a news cameraman or uh, I guess probably a news cameraman, but the form factor that's popular for camcorders is actually a big advantage. Two real advantages to that. One of them is that the bigger your camcorders get, the heavier they tend to be. And that sounds like a disadvantage, but in some respects, it's a it's an advantage because it makes it easier to stabilize the camcorder uh, just with your body, right? It's got a good bit of mass and you just need to make sure the mass of the camcorder is positioned somewhere like on your shoulder or here, you know, that uh, is basically going to keep it pretty stable. Now, in terms of uh, rigging options, you know, this camcorder is about, I think, a $1,500 camcorder, and it may seem strange to say I think it's a bargain, but I kind of also do think this camcorder is a bargain. The more you use it, the more you realize how much is under the hood. For instance, the Pro Audio top handle on the Canon XA series, you've got two dedicated XLR inputs, and you've got physical switches for controlling your gain, um, toggling between manual and auto gain, and you can even turn on or off the entire top handle. And because we've got the space on this camcorder form factor, we can put all these buttons at hand's reach. And that's, uh, we'll get to run and gun later, but that's another major advantage of camcorders and why they're still super popular among ENG users. Um, okay, another advantage of cam camcorders is that, of course, they are designed for video. Now, digital cinema cameras are also designed for video, stuff like the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, but stuff like DSLR and mirrorless is are clearly generally not intended for video. So vi I wouldn't say video is an afterthought, but the manufacturer's first priority is packing them with good features for capturing images. Now you can do pretty much anything with anything these days, right? You can use a camcorder to take still images. It's just not the right tool for the job. You're, you know, you're having a big bulky thing for no reason. You can just get a little point and shoot camera. Um, so that's a big advantage that you kind of see that in terms of the features that a camcorder manufacturers bring. For instance, again, coming back to my camcorder, the two dedicated XLR jacks, something you will not typically find on DSLR and mirrorless if they have an XLR at all. And if they don't, you're probably using adapters and that kind of just makes it a whole bit, whole lot more complicated to, uh, to shoot with. 
That brings me on perfectly to point four, that camcorders are amazing for what's called run and gun. In other words, if you just need to have a decent system for capturing video that you can quickly get out, I can have this guy up and running in literally two or three seconds. I just flip on the on switch, flip down the hood, and we're good to go. Um, I've also got a shotgun microphone always attached to this um, in the holster, and that's again a kind of very classic camcorder thing. I do commonly use this with wireless XLR systems, but I know that if I don't have time to rig up a, rig up a handheld microphone or rig up a wireless lav mic, the shotgun's going to be there and getting me much better audio capture than internal audio, and that goes across. DSLR mirrorless camcorders, the internal audio is almost always going to be pretty drastically inferior to what you can capture with a dedicated microphone. Now the fifth advantage that I scribble down in my notes for this, and it's not going to sound like an advantage, but in my opinion it actually kind of is, you actually have less, you've less, a good deal less options in the camcorder market. I made a video about a month ago looking at B and H, uh, the very well-known uh, video store, looking at their options for um, dig DSLR cameras, mirrorless cameras, and camcorders. And what I found was that in the pro camcorder market, we're talking about 64 models at top and 32 if you put in uh, 4K shooting capability as a requirement. So it's a much, much smaller market than DSLR and mirrorless because they've just exploded in popularity Now that might sound like a disadvantage but I would actually contend it's kind of an advantage because if you have a budget in mind you have a couple of features in mind you may be choosing only between four or five camcorders Sony, JVC, Panasonic are really really well represented in the space so you might be assessing you know two or three options versus you know spending ages going through spec sheets and trying to determine uh, the best DSLR or mirrorless for your video work. Okay, let's get on to the cons here um, in this video. Here's the first con that I never expected once I bought a pro camcorder, uh, but it's true. Everyone thinks you're working for a TV station. I'm not kidding. Um, I made a video last night at a wine festival here in Jerusalem. And I was, you know, asking a couple of the uh, guys selling wine, would they like to be interviewed? And a couple of them were like, which station, you know, a good few, they're like, what station are you? And it was only when I told them it was for a YouTube video that they agreed to be interviewed. The second thing uh, that you'll notice when people assume you're working for TV or the professional media is that you get photobombed like crazy because apparently everyone wants to get on TV, even if they're 40 or 50 years old. So um, one, and this is actually, I, I'm not just making this joke to kind of kid around. One thing I would say is that having a small camcorder like the Femi uh, Pam 2, which I have sitting here on my desk, I mean, if you compare this in size to this, it's uh, there's, and this is a compact camcorder. Technically, when you're shooting on private property, you need to ask the permission of someone to film there but show me a youtuber who has never filmed somewhere uh you know just just asked for forgiveness rather than permission it's a lot easier with this the moment you whip out something even this size out of your gear bag everyone in the vicinity is going to assume you're working for the tv news and people are probably not gonna be very happy with you filming stuff uh, without asking their permission. So that is, it's actually a serious disadvantage, in my opinion, if you're a little bit shy, like I am about filming in public. On the other hand, it's a great way to get over it because everyone's going to stare at you using a big camcorder. Okay, um, number two is actually kind of related to that point. They're definitely bulkier. And this is, again, the XA, XA series. This is about as compact as pro camcorders has ever gotten but they're still a lot busy a lot bigger than dslr and mirrorless with the kind of tidy lens on them so sometimes when i might filming video in order to grab my camcorder gear i really need to fill up a backpack you know to get a couple of extra power backs to get some lighting in it and sometimes i do kind of wish um i had something as easy to work with um as a as a camera now one disadvantage this is going to be kind of a sub point is that when it comes to gimbals, you're gonna have actually less options with camcorders. Because if you look at your typical gimbal, like the DJI series of gimbals, the Ronin series, they just about were able to work with my old camcorder, the Vixia HFR 800. I don't think there is any gimbal that's gonna actually fit this camcorder. It's just, 
it's just too big for it. The modern consumer gimbals are intended for box-like camcorders. Now, there are other stabilization systems on the market, but they're a lot more expensive. So you might need to look into doing something like uh, steady cams or physical stabilization and not using those nice electric gimbals. Again, I would say there's actually a lot of beauty to be, be to learning, and I'm working on this every video I make, I'm trying to get better, learning how to stabilize with your body two or three points of contact. And that's kind of how camcorder operators have always had to do it. So again, you could see there's sort of an advantage and a disadvantage here at the same time. Uh, jumping up to three, uh, my third con is that for the price you pay to get a camcorder, you're going to actually get less features. Your money is not going to go as far as it would as it would buying a DSLR or mirrorless. For instance, in order for me to get into the one inch CMOS sensor range on a camera, I need to pay uh, a lot less money than I do for this. This only has a one over 2.3. Um, another feature that you're going to have to pay a little bit over definitely over a thousand dollars to get in camcorder land is 4k capability now the reason for that is that actually broadcast journalism still mostly runs on 1080p even though the industry is slowly shifting towards using 4k so given that 1080p has been the industry standard for a while it's proving slow to dislodge versus dslr and mirrorless that are more kind of consumer facing technologies for video use, you're going to find, you're gonna get your 4K, you're gonna get your one inch sensor for better low light performance at a lower price point than in camcorder land. That can feel frustrating, but again, I would say that look, with the camcorder you're getting, you, you may be losing out on a couple of those features or paying more for them, but you're getting a hell of a lot of features in terms of pro audio mixing, uh, SDI output, 3.5 mil in, and all the different capabilities, time code, all the different capabilities that are kind of expected in the professional realm for video. Okay, um, for con, you're gonna lose the ability to play around with lenses. A lot of uh, DSLR and, um, and mirrorless videographers really like different lenses to try get more cinematic looks for their footage. And obviously, if you have a fixed lens camcorder like the XA40, you're just not gonna be able to change lens. As I said, you're limited to what you can do with adapters and filters. So if you're really interested in getting cinematic footage and playing around with lenses, that's one disadvantage in the camcorder world. Okay, final con to wrap up this video. Um, and now this is gonna, again, it sounds one that's kind of fluffy, but hear me out here. You'll meet less, vid you'll meet less camcorder people when you're going out shooting so most of my friends who do video stuff shoot with mirrorless camcorders and you know you'll be out shooting and someone will recognize your camera and you can talk about the camera now what I'm, the point i'm trying to make here is that the user community for camcorders i would say is probably smaller at least among the non-professional side so you're going to have less stuff like internet forums facebook groups other places to meet like-minded people who are using the tool for video just simply because there's less i would argue there's probably in the consumer realm at least less folks out there shooting with camcorders that doesn't mean that there aren't plenty of camcorder people out there the resources i love um the videography subreddit which is our videography is super good i really like that community canon have some uh fora for their users and uh, the people who like camcorders, I've noticed, are really loyal to camcorders. So you'll meet, you'll, I, I think you'll probably meet more really enthusiastic people in the camcorder space. But that is just something to uh, perhaps put at the back of your mind. I hope that's been uh, useful if you're looking at trying to size up what is going to be the best option for your videography needs. Whether it's going to be a camcorder or whether it's going to be a DSLR or mirrorless. There are definitely pros and cons to each. Personally, I've gone with camcorders for my whole video career to date, even though my wife has a nice mirrorless camera. And I've shot a few videos with that just to learn how to use it. But personally, my needs are much best served by camcorders uh, than DSLR, mirrorless, or even actually cinema cameras. Those are kind of the big three categories. I hope that uh, that video has been useful. Um, if you do want to get more videos from me about videography and other subjects like this, do please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel and thank you very much for watching.